Um, I asked her again to call 911. She would do nothing. So I ran to the front door, which was the closest door to where the incident took place, and it was locked. And I kicked the door in, and I dialed 911. And I have a police report here that documents exactly what Why I did. Why didn't you wait for the police, sir? When I came back to, the, to my brother, M Missy was still there, um, he slowly regained consciousness. And I asked him, I said, Matt, what can I do for you? I mean, I was, I've never been so scared in my life. I mean, and, I, and he said, just, just get me out of here, just get me out of here. We didn't know who this guy was. We'd never met him. We'd never even seen him. Uh, we didn't know if he had 10 friends there. You're Matt. Yes. Step up, sir. How did this incident begin? Well, after I was after I was assaulted, I really, you know, don't have much recollection of what Immediate happened. But leave okay, before. I was I was talking to um, one of my friends who was also a, a guest at the party, and like uh, like Missy said, um, there had been an altercation earlier in the night with um, this young man that was at the party. And I remember that um, they had exchanged words, and there was a fight about ready to be broken out. So I turned around, with like, like actually like this, because I was talking to another young lady, and I said, excuse me. And I said, you know what? We don't want to fight. I said, we're here for a birthday party. No one wants to fight, you know? I turned my head, and the next thing I knew it, he hit me right in the head. I fell to the ground, shaking like this, I tried to get up like this, and I turned my head, and he booted me right in the face, and out I went. And after that, I, I, is, that's there's, really what happened. Since February 28th, there's been a, a, fel a class one felony assault with a deadly weapon out for this gentleman's arrest. What they're forgetting to tell you also is Chris was allegedly trying to blackmail me to find out this person's name for him, or else he said he wouldn't fix my door. It would seem to me that since this incident occurred in your home, and one of your invited guests was assaulted, you would want to be as cooperative as possible and find out the name of the person. Yeah. Why did it require this kind of blackmail in order to get you to get out there and get this it, name for it them? It didn't require anything. They were making a mountain out of a molehill of this whole situation. That's not a mountain out of a molehill, madam. He could have been killed. I want to, I want to explain something to you. If somebody had come up to you, just you, at your birthday party, punched you in the face, and then kicked you in the head, I guarantee you, you wouldn't be standing there saying to me, he's making a mountain out of a molehill. Your Honor, I... Shut up! Oh, I'm sorry. D listen, when it looks as if you're winning, you're supposed to shut up. <laughs> Miss LaBeouf, I have a couple of questions for you. My sense is that I'm not getting a full story from you with regard to his condition at the time he asked you to call 911. Because common sense would tell me that you were having a birthday party and the prospect of having the police arrive because of an emergency was not something that you relished. So I doubt whether he was as in good shape as you suggest he was when this young man asked you to call 911. No, that had nothing to do with it. The party, it, it was 2.30 already. The party had been go going all night long. I cared more about my friend. I've known Matt since eighth grade. I went to homecoming with him my freshman so year. So why didn't you just go inside and call 911? I would have, but Chris was completely irate and, and drunk and overreacting. If Chris said, Missy, go in and call 911, and I looked over and I saw Matt in a completely knocked out condition, I would have, Matt was getting up. 